Hello, and welcome to the College Humor Podcast. This is the show where the cast and crew of College Humor uh, are just going to sit around, kind of have some conversation, play some games, uh, and talk a bit about uh, the things that go into making all your favorite videos, and probably some that you didn't like so much. Um, um, I am Mike Trapp. Joining us today, we have... Jesse. I'm Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Janie. I'm a branded writer here. I'm Brennan. I'm a cast member. Great. Um, I'm a producer. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, we should probably. Think, yeah, so, I am, uh, clearly you don't see me ever in videos. Very rarely. But Jesse's working very hard behind the scenes to make sure those videos go off uh, without a hitch. Uh, have you? Have you, uh, you? And you'll pop up in videos occasionally. I do. If you, you, there are a ton of videos where I'm in the background or a, a lot of establishing shots of at the parties. I'm usually in. <laughs> occasionally, I have a line. Um, but uh, yeah. Is just, there? A role that you is, is there any role that you were like that you particularly remember as being like oh that was like either rough being on set that day or was like oh this is kind of fun I get to be in this 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 video today um the one that I've done recently that I had a line was Katie's video about the wedding um speech mm. and and I had a little line at the end of that and that was really fun <laughs> and then the one that everyone remembers actually on Facebook uh someone that I barely knew in high school reached out to me and was like Oh my God! You are the most successful person from our high school because you are in a college humor video, <laughs> and it was the diet racism one. That was however <laughs> long ago. Wow. Um, awesome. Well, that's that's Indeed. clear to fame. Yeah. Um, it's great. Uh, Jesse also uh, produces um, actually, and mm -hmm. along with a bunch of other, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of other videos. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Janie, uh, Janie, you, you saw as an elf recently, <laughs> most recently. And these two, um, such a joy. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I did portray a sort of Jewish sounding <laughs> elf. I can't help it. You know, it's one of those things for a Christmas video. You got to bring who like you are. This responding to some specific comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so. com I'm responding <laughs> to the comments for sure. I read every single one. Um, <laughs> but no, they were great because it was a great video. Mm -hmm. And I was in um, the realistic 80s party with Brennan as well, um, playing a confused 80s girl. Great. Yeah. Um, and Jeannie's uh, written uh, a handful of other sketches for us, uh, some branded and some not. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Those these are some faces that you might not see as much who are who are uh, you know making help make all the magic happen. Um, I guess I should also say if you are only listening to us and you want to see some of these faces, <laughs> uh, uh, you can uh, watch this on uh, on Dropout TV uh, or you can uh, check it out on CH2. But that's going to be much later. If you're watching this on CH2, you can go to any of those other places I mentioned. Look, it's available all over the place. <laughs> Do you decide if you want to see us or not? Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, cool. What's uh, what's everyone been up to lately? It, uh, it sounded like from just chatting beforehand that everyone's had a lot of um, problems with their apartment. All our homes are falling apart, and we don't know what to do about it. <laughs> We've all had infestations in some sort of way this past week. Mm -hmm. That's, true. That's true. You said you had uh, uh, rats in your apartment? I had rats in my apartment, and it's terrifying. And they only come out when I'm the only one at home, and then they run around the living room taunting me. And then I'm this the only one. This is a Mr. Snuffleupagus situation, <laughs> yeah. where like, no one else believes you have rats? Rats. <laughs> I had to, yeah. We ended up catching a few, thank God. And I hopefully, and hopefully God. they're caught. Caught a few? This is crazy. Yes, here's the thing. We thought we had one rat. We named him Henry. You know, <laughs> and then we finally <laughs> caught Henry, and I was like, thank God, we finally caught this rat. It was 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. We, we hear another rat being caught. And then we're like, oh no, Henry has friends. Can I ask how you caught the rat? Uh, the rat trap. Okay. I, yeah, I, I had like to. Mice are bad, but rats are so much worse. It's like they're little humans. They were this big. Ah, okay. I when I was in um, uh, when I was in college, there's this one period where uh, I was on campus just a little early uh, for doing this sort of like welcoming freshman kind of kind of thing, and um, they the dorms weren't ready yet, so they're like, oh well, you can go in these like. The, like, whatever, like the crappiest, crappy ass dorms. And like, you'll, you can be here for like a week before you, you can go move in wherever. And, um, uh, I had uh, I had a pet rabbit at the time. We weren't supposed to have it, so I, it was kind of like hidden. It was like I was normally living in a place where that was okay, but it wasn't allowed in the dorm. So it's like I need to put this rabbit somewhere. So it's just gonna be like under my bed for a while, and. Uh, in that period there, there were uh, I noticed that there were mice like 
in the in the dorm, and I didn't want to call facilities to be like, "Hey, come take care of these mice," because then they would see I had this rabbit. So I ended up like rigging up the this like bootleg mouse trap that was um, it was like a water bottle uh, where I had and I bought some nutter butters <laughs> and broke but haven't put them in the water bottle and then balanced it over like over the edge of a of um, of a desk so that if it crawled in there and got all the way to the end where the nutter butter was the weight of it would tilt it over and like trap it in the in the bottle um Did it and work? I, I caught it yeah so i That's caught it insane. and so i had this uh, this water bottle with a mouse in it that was like ah now what do i do <laughs> oh with this God. could you not afford a, a mouse trap at i the didn't want to kill it <laughs> um there's I, also I'm humane tender-hearted. rat or mice traps and rat traps yeah i mean i guess if this sounds like what I did was a lot, a lot more work, but there's probably also a part of me that's just like, I don't want to have to go to a store and figure out what mouse trap to buy and yeah, what. Yeah, you didn't have to leave to do this one. Yeah, Not, this was you know. this was a total like MacGyver situation. Just like, what do I have on hand? I got yeah. a rubber band, a water bottle that I can cut in half. Oh my god, that's I amazing. cannot imagine being in a place in my life where I'm like the path of least resistance is for me to invent a trap with household <laughs> items around me. That's fucking wild. That's crazy. Well, it worked. Seems That's like amazing. you had a little bit of time on your hands. I, I mean, the classes hadn't started yet. Uh, just you and the rabbit hanging out. Just hanging out, chatting. Yeah. <laughs> it's very funny to me also to have two animals that are in terms of species, like pretty similar to each other, <laughs> yeah. and be like, this fuzzy little guy is good, and I will break <laughs> laws to get this little guy in my place. This fuzzy little guy? No, thank you. <laughs> that rabbit was also far more destructive than those mice were. <laughs> that thing, Don't they like eat wires that, and stuff? It chewed through everything. <laughs> it chewed through, oh, I, there were, we, I had a, like a stack of laundry uh, on my bed one time where I was like, I don't have time to fold this yet, but I, I'll just lay it out flat and, and then I'll fold it later. Um, and so it was a stack of clothes and it chewed straight through it. So all my shirts had a hole <laughs> in the same spot because it would just like oh drill through. That happened, so with these rats, I have built in in my apartment and um, their drawer, so it's where I keep my sweaters and my pants. Mm-hmm. And they live in the built-ins behind it somewhere. Yep. And so they ate like half of my pants now have holes in Are them because and the most terrifying thing is that's we put a little trap there to try to catch one and we caught one in my in my drawer. So I mean, yeah, we didn't we had a uh, I was living uh, in uh, on Gold Street in New York City for many years. It was like that was my, my young 20s with like my brother and two very close friends. It was like our, our bachelor pad kind of place. And we the we were down an old, old financial district in, like by the seaport in New York, which is just rats and mice and cockroaches everywhere. That part of the city is like 250 years old. And there's just, you know, chewed out brick and mortar everywhere where these guys just thrive. And there was one night where a mouse ran across the living room and we went, ah! And then five minutes later, he ran by again and we went, ah! And then he ran by again and we were like, is this guy just doing laps to fuck with us? <laughs> and then three mice ran the other way all at the same time and we went, no, it was a different mouse each time! <laughs> it was three different mice and they were together now! They ganged up! Oh, so we went God. and got traps um, to catch these mice. And we felt bad because the only traps that were available near us, because the because you know like that part of Manhattan just shuts down after a certain point. There's not too much. It's mostly like a commuter place. Uh, so we couldn't find any humane traps, but we wanted to get traps up like right away, like ASAP. And we were like, oh, there's no humane traps here. And then my brother was like, listen, if forget mice for a second. If there was just a person who was staying in our apartment, not paying rent and shitting in all of our bowls, we could kill that person. Mm -hmm. And that's just fair. And that's not, we're not, it's not about them being mice. We don't think about them as mice. It's just like, Jeff, you've been chewing holes in our cereal boxes and taking poisonous shits in all of them that's getting us sick. You won't leave. We're gonna kill you. Right. Um, right. And don't make Brennan mad. Gee. No, I'm just saying. Listen, the look. When we law. signed the lease, you <laughs> said I could stay here. You said I could shit in your bowls. You don't pay rent. You never have clothes on. The rent's you... coming. The rent's coming. Okay. Also, my cognition's not great. Yeah. Like, I'm not really sure about your place and mine. Also, even the trap is kind of like, hey man, I put some of my peanut butter on my trap. I didn't give you permission to eat it. You did. Right. And now you're, dead. you're an idiot. So, that was a trap. That you're was dead. A trap. Yeah. This is quick for them? Yeah, versus the glue ones are very cruel. The glue glue ones are very cruel. Although I will say, 
<laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> I don't feel great about this. Well, we got the traps that were like instant, like like instant death, which is not. Let's be very clear, not humane. You're killing the animal, but a quick death. Or so we thought. Okay. There was one night where I was asleep in my room, and we had had a mouse problem there. And um, I was asleep in my bed. I had them near my waste paper basket, where these guys used to jump and make a lot of noise, like splashing around in the plastic of the waste paper basket, <laughs> just like having a ball in there. And it was very noisy. Mm-hmm. And I put it. So I put a trap there. And. Um, I, as I'm beginning to tell this story, I'm realizing this might be upsetting, but we're, gonna, <laughs> we're too but far we're in too now. Far in. <laughs> I'm really, I actually am very up. sorry if you find this upsetting. For those that um, uh, get upset, um, watch out. Um, <laughs> so I'm in this, in bed, sleeping, and I hear, Wah! and then, <laughs> and I go like, wow, shit. There go you know there goes the brave soul. I'm so sorry, bud. You know there but there it goes. That's 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 the mouse. Brave soul. Um, and then, literally like a minute and I'm like I'm like I don't I'll deal with it in the morning, and then a minute and a half later I hear wha and I go Jesus because I'd set two traps out because we had so many mice in the apartment, and I was like oh my god we got another one what a, these these mice are really going for it, and I'm like okay I'm gonna go back to bed so to go back to bed and then I start hearing donk 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 donk. I go, what the hell? Turn the light on. The most muscular mouse I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like a true Rambo. This mouse was like the kind of guy who was like doing one-handed pull-ups like on scaffolding outside on the street. A like, mouse hero. A mouse hero had one trap on a back leg, the other one on his side, and was the thumping noise was him trying to just like commando style with his arms pull and the the mass of two traps attached to his body uh, uh, was he couldn't fit through the space between the desk and my bookshelf and was but it was like a loud pounding noise. He was so powerful. This was like a mouse hero. It was like a True, this like, like yeah. Captain America mouse. He this probably the took those bullets, those traps for other mice. Oh yeah. How does it end he, for him? He, How does it oh, end? Great, <laughs> really well, really <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> he ended up okay, Definitely right? Definitely a very happy <laughs> ending, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. He was reunited <laughs> with his sister. Everything's good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did no. He There's, did not. We we I, I got up and as like uncomfortable <laughs> as it was for me, like. We, uh, I, my other roommate was awake, and I was like, "What do I do?" And it was like, "Well, he's in pain. You have to, yeah. you know." So it, he he died a hero's death. Uh, it was very very sad. And you're right, actually. His we, wife and kids are now safe because of him. So that's great. And actually, I'm realizing that we did not. We were too broke to get more traps, so we did not get <laughs> more traps. Um, you could have made one out of a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I, I'm realizing I have so many like rodent stories. That <laughs> the um, the first car I bought when I was like I was just about to turn 16, um, and uh, uh, I bought it off my brother. And it was this little tiny um, like two seater um, old sports car, and uh, my brother was dead set on buying. Um, a buying a convertible, a used one. Like not like he was like, I'm gonna get a cool car. I was just like, oh, this is just another old crappy car that happens to be a convertible. Um, but he got that, wanted to sell his car, uh, and uh, I was like, I'll buy it off you, and then you don't have to go through all the trouble of like putting a listing out or cleaning it or doing anything. I'll take care of all that. Just give sell it to me for the same price you bought it for, uh, or less. And um, uh, and the car was. Full of trash because he had this habit of like when he was driving to work he'd like swing into like a fast food place and then like eat a burger and just toss the wrapper behind it. So I cleaned it all out and the next day I went down there to like do a little bit more work on it and I was like these look like rat droppings in here. It's like these weren't here when I was cleaning up before. So I vacuumed it up and I told my parents I was like I think there's like a rat in there or something. And my dad was like, you know, like hey, if there's a rat in there, if it got in there, it can get out. You got rid of all the food, so it'll just leave. And uh, the rat droppings stop appearing and that everything seems fine for a while until I go down there one day and, and I'm I'm just like something smells a little a little bad in here. Well, 
I'll t I, I definitely don't want that to be a dead mouse, so I'll just hang an air freshener. And I'll, okay, <laughs> that'll yeah. do it. That'll do <laughs> it. If I just deny it hard enough, like that'll solve the problem. You'll get used to the smell. It'll yeah. Be fine. And it was like a week of just like hanging air fresheners before I was finally like, <laughs> Dad, I'm uh, something died in that car. He's like, No, no, you just have to, you just have to air it out. Like, I'll, you know what? I'll drive it to work tomorrow. That'll get the oil moving through it. That'll get some air moving through. It'll be fine. He came, <laughs> he came back from work the other day. He's like, Something died in your car. <laughs> like oh, we had to I spent this is I should say is like this is California in the middle of the summer and it's just like the the, the day was finally it's like I'm going to find this thing and cuz it's a again it's a small car like we looked in like every like not in the glove compartment not anywhere and uh just this the smell that's like I can still smell it talking about it now it's like burned into my brain and we had the, I had the doors to the car open and it would be the kind of thing where I'd like take a deep breath and then like hold my breath as I was like looking around. Oh my God. And, and as I'm like looking for the remnants of this mouse, uh, I, flies are flying into the car and you can see, see they're all like hovering around like the center, like where you, you would like change gears and they're oh. all like hovering around <laughs> there. So it's like, how ah, the flies know something I don't. I had to take apart all these pieces to get to it, but like open it up and it was like, It'd be like in a in like a movie when they like they open like a mummy's tomb, you know, or just sort of like, ah! just like the smell was like almost like a physical presence. Like it like I oh! felt like I could feel it on me. And and underneath was this the was like an uh this pile of like of old like Safeway receipts Ooh. and um, about a pound of ash because the previous owner had been a, a oh. smoker so there's just all this ash and then like one <gasps> rat just like a dead ass. and just like like dead eye just glaring up at me through there. <laughs> And that that like I I couldn't <laughs> drop I like it was a good two months before I could get the <gasps> smell totally out of that place and like feel like I could drive that car. I'm just picturing like a huge like Olympic swimming pool of alcohol and just like dipping the car into and out of <laughs> like I need this whole thing sterilized like. Well, what it was is like you would I loaded it up with all these like it's just like it's like any kind of air freshener, any kind of anything that can like neutralize, deodorize, like sprays, powders, everything. But at a certain point, because most of those things just cover the smell, right? They don't actually get rid of anything. And then what I, I would what was stuck in my brain was the mixture of those smells. It makes like, it, like, it, makes it yeah, worse. And then you start to associate the smell of those deodorizers with the smell. Right, like lemon rats. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, well, now I can't smell lemon anymore. It's Coming lemon soon to a store near you. It's that lemon, lemon rat, rat smell. <laughs> it's squeaky clean. Can I tell you what I pictured? My hope was this story would end in like the rat had been Ferris Buellering your car and like taking it out for a joy ride and you came back and he was just like, what, I'm cool? And he'd been driving the convertible. That would, that would have been a magic. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, life so comes funny. at you fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, man. Instead, it was a sarcophagus for yeah. this poor rat. For this <laughs> awful, awful rat. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Blech. Now I don't like lemon anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, we've talked about rodents for a while. Uh, so maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll move on to uh, our game. Our game today, we're just going to play a, a, a classic with a little bit of a twist. We're going to be playing Fuck, Mary Kill. Um, but we will not be playing with any people at all. These will be... I, I honestly don't know what's in here. Our, our producers, uh, uh, Marie and Paul, have, have gathered together some things that are in here. As far as I understand it, they, these are objects, abstract concepts, um, these are just um, just things that we will have to sort of uh, make our claim uh, who to who to fuck, who to marry, who to kill. So, um, Brennan, you've got a bag of uh, uh, bag down there with with things in there. You want to reach in there, pull one out, and see what we got here? Yes. Am I pulling out one of these items at a time? One card. One card should have three things on it. Very well. All right. For our first round of fuck, marry, kill, sex. Marriage and murder. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I was hoping I, when you first said that, I was like, I was like, oh, like th th these are going to be all mixed up. But as I think about it, it's like, no, I don't know if they are. <laughs> I think I think you kill murder. You gotta kill murder. I think you gotta you, kill no, murder. it's kind of fun. I, I'm thinking about. You want to fuck murder? <laughs> Why not? Am I right? I guess, you know, like, 
like one wild night, yeah. and then you don't, and then you don't True. think about it ever again. It's gone. It's a one night stand. You kill someone, so I, what? Move on. But then, what do you? Uh, uh, but then, sorry. But then, what are you? Are you killing? I think marriage? I'm gonna, okay, this is my thing, and I. Okay. Can, so I'm gonna fuck murder. Okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm wait. I'm gonna fuck murder. I'm going to. <laughs> I just had this in my head. I'm gonna uh, kill. Um, I'm gonna kill fuck our sex. I'm sorry. I'm gonna kill, kill sex. sex. <laughs> and I'm gonna marry marriage. Or whatever it is. And you marry marriage? So you murder, yeah, you you're have... going to kill sex, you're going to fuck murder, and marry marriage? Yeah. That's uh, You're I'm describing just... a nightmare world. <laughs> I mean, you are describing... So the concept of sex is dead. So now... Call me a softie, you know? <laughs> so sex is dead. No one can have sex anymore. Right. But the love is still alive. I guess sexless so. Marriage. Yeah. So everyone's sexless in a sexless so marriage, it's and like a good all pleasure comes. Now I can. Get all behind, pleasure comes from killing. I can. I can get behind. Now you're. You're. Start, uh, you said uh, like fuck. Uh, God, now I'm gonna confuse myself. Now yes. you said fuck murder. It's like okay. Yeah. I, I guess I can kind of. I can get the logic behind yeah. that. But then I thought for sure it would be kill marriage because marriage as an institution has all kinds of problems right. already. That's like true. I could That's imagine true. a world where it's like you know what do we need to do this anymore? more uh um but kill sex man that, that surprised me that's a tough one. you know i i do now that you explain it like that there might be some flaws with my thinking <laughs> but i'm gonna stand with it i'm gonna Are you a big marriage fan not particularly yeah. no actually mm -hmm. so that's surprising too but hey it's like a best friend for life am i right sure sure just Makes with a contract sure <laughs> sure what about you jenny i think oh, sorry. um i think i'm going standard i think i'm going Marry Keep marriage. Keep impaired, Marry yeah. marriage, Marry marriage. Fuck, or fuck sex and fuck, kill fuck. murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds like a good world, actually. <laughs> I like things to be how they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that you, as I think you, yeah, you don't don't overthink this one, right? Yeah. yeah. You fuck sex because <laughs> hey, that sounds like a great time. <laughs> you marry marriage because yeah, that feels. Uh, that's who you settle down. That's who with. you settle down with marriage. You know it can commit. And then you have to kill murder because yeah. first of all, not only would that make the world a better place, but also isn't that kind of cool? If you're like you're like someone's like God, I'm scared of murder, and you're like, why? I fucking killed. I fucking yeah, killed but murder. isn't it also kind of cool to fuck murder? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, you scared of murder? I fucked it. I will say, I think this is the more logical one, and I think <laughs> Jesse's made a more fun scenario. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, well, the only one we haven't explored would be to marry <laughs> murder, <laughs> and you're like, I've seen enough oh, Netflix like shows that's about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you seen the old ball and chain? <laughs> Woof. They are a nightmare. Yeah. I don't. I don't like. I don't want to. Talk ill of anyone, but I don't get how Brennan and Murder wound up together, right? <laughs> no. like, they seem so different. Does marriage, marriage have money or something? No. <laughs> or uh, Murder have money? Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, marriage is um, hard. It is hard. <laughs> and you're not always going to see eye to eye in someone's, you know, the concept of illegal slaughter. There's and a lot of blood involved. There's a lot of blood involved. And that's it's how it goes. It takes hard work. It's yeah. hard work. It's hard. Um, cool. All right. Well, I'll pull the next card here. There you go. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna jumble these up in case they're in a particular order, and we don't want that. They're in kind of a stack. That feels less fun. Okay, I'll go ahead and give that to Janie right now so she's just ready with it. Okay, Fahrenheit, <laughs> Celsius, and Kelvin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know Kelvin that well. That's I hard. Kelvin, yeah. I might kill it. Kelvin, that, that's, <laughs> we're talking like absolute zero there, right? Kelvin is is like. Zero Kelvin is is what is absolute zero again? No, oh. sure. it's like the temperature at it's some. Um, I'm going to look this up. Fair enough. Now that we're on a podcast right now, I'm straight up looking it up because yeah. I want to know. Zero Kelvin, it's some stupidly cold thing. It's like the temperature at which like. Uh, is it more uh, the scientific? Kelvin, the Kelvin is the primary unit of temperature measurement in the physical sciences, but is often used in conjunction with the degree Celsius, which has the same magnitude. The definition implies that absolute zero, zero Kelvin, is equivalent to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. So yes, oh. Kelvin. What, and what is uh, absolute zero, though, is the temperature at which like it's some... It, there's some definition of absolute zero that's like... The coldest it can fucking it's be. It's cold as it can fucking be. Yeah. All right. Mm. Well, that's what we're looking at. Mm. Is there really a limit to how cold something can be? The temperature at which all thermal motion ceases in the mm, classical I description see. of thermodynamics. So the point at which like the movement of 
uh, you know, bodies so small and large that truly all motion has ceased. Oh, You're frozen nice. in place. Yeah. Frozen yeah. in place, yeah. Wow. Ooh, that's a, that's a doozy. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think I th I think this, there's a straightforward answer here. And I'm going to tell you. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that we need to um, kill Fahrenheit. Okay. Because it's just because it's goofy. It's goofy and stupid. Why? Why are why we freezing are we at thirty-two? This? Yeah, yeah. We, should get in, we should get on board with all the metric stuff and no, you know, like this is going to be my hot take. No oh, pun intended. I like Fahrenheit. <laughs> I mean, no, no wonder we all Can grew up with it. I think well, it's no, cute. But, no, be, but beyond that, beyond that, are you I, saying you're going to marry Fahrenheit? Um, I put your money where your mouth is. You know what? I will. I will marry Fahrenheit. Uh, 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 I think. Uh, yeah, Mar Fahrenheit, that's who I want to settle down with. Uh, is it because you're comfortable with them? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I understand Fahrenheit. I really understand it. Uh, I think I like that I like that Fahrenheit exists as like on a purely like stupid level of like zero to 100 of just like it's like th sometimes things get below zero like outside and you're like, oh, that's fucking cold. But you can understand if someone's like it's zero degrees outside. It's like, well, yeah, that's that's pretty cold and if someone's like that's a hundred degrees outside it's like that's pretty hot <laughs> and things will go like in your general day-to-day -day life things can go like negative that by like you know down to a little while and things can go like a hundred you know over a hundred but for the most part like you're kind of living in that zone and like that's a very easy thing for me to understand but i feel like you think that because you grew up with it but there's also there's more le like you have to do half degrees of celsius in mm. order to get the levels the levels of gradation in there because like it's not just like it's the scope of like freezing water to boiling water instead of just being like here's the scope of like human existence a little bit hmm. i understand that that's yeah. well argued very well argued. i get I that i'm still gonna yeah. kill it i'm sorry <laughs> oh you're gonna kill fahrenheit i will okay what are we doing with Kelvin? Are we? That's a toughie. I think I, I feel bad killing him. I feel like you maybe fuck what? Kelvin because yeah. yeah, you gotta fuck Kelvin. He, he's that, that the you Kelvin. Gotta. I don't, I'm saying he because Kelvin sounds like a male name. Saying. I did that too. I did that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like it's like that. That's chill, right? right. <laughs> Kelvin's chill. Kelvin's, well, Kelvin's cooler than being cool. <laughs> <laughs> if we agree that you gotta kill Fahrenheit, which I'm on board, mm -hmm. with, all right, because you've made your argument is very compelling. However, in the interest of getting us on the same page with the rest of the world, I understand. Metric, I think you marry Celsius, right? So oh, that's. Yeah. So you're spending your life with, mm. you got to kill Fahrenheit. And I think Kelvin is like, if you're only going to just fuck one time, there's nothing else that's going to happen. It's like, what is your weird fucking deal? I think Kelvin is fun. I think Kelvin's kind of sexy, you know? Like, there's something you get to free, you freeze in your spot when you see him, you know what I mean? There's also something a little bit of just like, I never, I never see you, you yeah. know? Like, uh, like Celsius, you see Fahrenheit, you see Kelvin's like, who Ooh, is this It's a good person? booty call, yeah. yeah. Like I said, mm -hmm. you walk in, they walk into the bar and you're like, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, like he's, we're gonna say he is smart. You know, oh, there's like some guy. sort of Very physical smart. science knowledge there that I don't have. I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Impractical though. You don't use him too often. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No. So you don't want to marry that. Yeah. Yeah. A, 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 a brief dalliance, and it's yeah. fun while it lasts. And sure. Then, something you do in college, and you move on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta yeah. experiment and then get out. Yeah, we talked about Kelvin a lot in college, but then it ultimately <laughs> wasn't practical. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you're, not, you're not gonna stick, or, stick with no. Kelvin. You're no. gonna stick around yeah. how cold it is outside. No, I yeah. agree. That's beautiful. All right, well, I think we cracked All right. it. All right, good, good. All right, moving on. We have glasses, contacts, LASIK. Mm. Wow, I think we might have an opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoa. I Yeah, I don't, ha I don't use Do you have 2020 20 eyes? Do you both have 2020 20 eyes? I have not been I tested in a long time, so. but I I test myself against my against my wife when we're, we'll be driving and she's wearing her glasses and the fact that I can still see farther than her, read signs farther than her when she's wearing her glasses Whoa. is like I think I'm doing okay. Well, we stare at screens all day. It's true. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's good for you. Good for you. Well, so what are you? What are uh, glasses versus contacts uh -huh. for for you two? Um, um, I've never had vision insurance, so <laughs> I've never had it as a financial option. <laughs> but I, I'd be curious. I when I for I got glasses in third grade, and mm. when I got glasses in third grade, I only wore them. I never wore them in pictures because I hated my glasses. Mm. And I did this up until a few years ago, and I wore my contacts, 
And then one day I was like, contacts are so expensive. And glasses kind of look cool. And I have a few pairs now. I can change them up. It's kind of like it's a fashion accessory. thing. It's you know what I like fun. about glasses? If you have under eye bags, you can get a glass line that sort of like hits where yeah. the bag hits. Mm. And it kind of just like makes your face look more interesting and alive yeah. sometimes, you know? Mm. Or you can like, you can change if you don't like something about your face, specifically me, you find ways where it's like, oh, this balances it. So this sounds like a very pro glasses argument. I, if you would have asked me five years ago, I would have said down with glasses, contacts are the way to go. But now I'm thinking glasses are definitely the way to go. I have another pro glass argument. I tend to get things near my face like I, like I you know, I get like sand in my eye or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I, these things are protective. And I love that. I, for an argument against for contacts, mm. though, when you chop onions, you don't cry because you got that little little piece of plastic between your eyes. Hey. So oh. it's just like That's a funny. superpower. It's so small, but does yeah. the job. At least it does for me. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I have never worn glasses, but I have worn contacts as special effects makeup stuff for LARPs and to make my eyes like white out or to do other creepy stuff with them. And they are hell and I don't like to touch my own eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't like to touch yeah. my own eyeballs. You know, you get past that real quick. Mm. I believe it. I know people that are good with it are like crazy. They're like bloop, bloop, and yeah. they're just in there. I could touch this for a day. I could just go around there and please really make you uncomfortable. Please don't do that, yeah. <laughs> but I won't. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I guess I would, I would propose then like, Mary glasses, right? You, you, like this is the thing that like you you can sort of you can keep things you changing on a day to day basis, them. but you always have them I and love that. and kill contacts mm -hmm. and, and then fuck, fuck the laser, right? Yeah, yeah. fuck a laser. Yeah, fuck a laser. <laughs> you want to fuck a laser? That's a good point. Here's the only thing I'll say with that mm. is that uh, I learned fairly recently that part of part of like laser eye surgery is that they have to anesthetize your eye, mm -hmm. which means that they have to stick a needle in your eye before God, they shine a laser okay. in your eye. Mm -hmm. And that, I don't fuck have with. Have you watched right. someone do laser LASIK eye surgery? Have you watched the video of it? We had to do it in school. No. And, um, Wait, you had to do, you had, we to, had watch to watch a video? No, we actually had to do medical that. school. I went to film school and then they made us all yeah. perform surgery on people's eyes to understand lenses. No. Um, but they, they like cut, I mean, like, you know, they cut your eye lid open. It's very unnerving. Mm. Oh, wow. But, um, so I'm going to, but now saying that, I think I'm going to marry glasses. I'm going to, um, I'm going to kill contacts and fuck. LASIK, I yeah. agree yeah. with you. It I thought I was going to change my mind, but no. I'm not. It, 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 like lasers, that, that feels like the, the crazy fling you do. It's like I don't, I don't know if this is, you know, this is whatever. But this feels like something to, something to try. And also, out. if you know it's going to be really painful, but you're only going to do it once, that's okay. You should, <laughs> you should only do it once. <laughs> you're like, all right, you know what? It's one night. One I'm night. probably not going to be here again. Fuck yeah. it, let's go. You should do LASIK. But then it changes you forever. And you can see better afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, the colors. Like, Ooh, that was worth it. Yeah. I feel like it's a botched surgery if you have to do LASIK more than once. So you shouldn't yeah. marry that. Yeah. Sure. You're right. You You're should right. just do it one and done, you know? Exactly, That's true. Yeah. That's right. true. I like that. Yeah. I'm in alignment with that. Okay. All right. Well, Jesse, you, you want to pull a card out for us and, and tell us? Uh, I would love to. <laughs> okay. Chicken parm, chicken tikka masala, or buffalo chicken? Ooh. Fuck all three. <laughs> fuck, fuck all three. <laughs> I want to fuck all three of those. <laughs> not even a, not even a, a thought experiment. I just I would like to order some various chicken dishes. Let's go get some buffalo wings, you guys. <laughs> I'm very hungry. Very hungry. In case you didn't hear, I didn't have breakfast. Um. Yeah. All right. Let's let's think about this. I think that I'm. Uh, I think of these three, I'm bored to death by chicken parm. Yeah, uh, I agree. I, I think oh, it's a classic. I think agree. it never goes out of style. Uh, that's my wife you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so marry chicken parm. <laughs> marry chicken parm. I honestly will marry and fuck all three and kill none. That's my answer to this question. Chicken, um, no, chicken parm. You go to Lil Dom's over in Los Feliz, you get the fucking chicken parm. It's, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's a solid chunk of meat. You could kill somebody with that thing. I mean, it's heavy. Uh-huh. I, if we're going, if the, we're at some weird ass chicken place where we're like, we make every kind of chicken in the world, and these three are on the menu, I'm never going for the chicken parm. 
farm. If chicken tikka masala and buffalo chicken are on the menu, uh, uh, it's a will, weird restaurant. It's, it's a weird <laughs> restaurant for on sure. The menu. Is buffalo chicken a wing? It doesn't have person. to be. It's like you, you can, can just, just get like a chicken breast? Well, buffalo is a sauce. So you can have boneless buffalo wings. You can have buffalo wings. You could have buffalo. Like you can get a buffalo chicken wrap. I just salivated so much <laughs> in my mouth. I truly salivated so much. <laughs> Fuck. It's all so good. Um, God, they're all so good. Can I just? I really want to know who you're gonna kill and yeah, who you're gonna Yeah, this is really fuck. more a question for Brennan. Really holding his feet to the fire about you have his to make a choices. choice. Um, there is a, <laughs> and I understand that this is a game. <laughs> I understand that. Sure. My answer, if you pose the question to me, it choose one of these three to kill. My answer to you is. No. Would I you kill? Shoot, I will kill myself. Yes, I, I will kill myself. Or I, I would kill myself to have all three of those chickens survive. Hmm. I kill chicken parm. <laughs> well, well, maybe I'm wrong. Chicken parm and chicken tikka masala are more based in a tradition, some kind of cuisine, right? Isn't buffalo chicken like an American thing yeah. where we just made it up? Buffalo, New York. Oh, so that is a tradition as well. I take that back. They're all very traditional and prime for marriage. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to marry Buffalo Chicken. I'm going to fuck chicken. You're like uh, ordering off a menu right now. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And anything on the side? And then next, I'm going uh -huh. to fuck chicken tikka masala. And oh, I'm that's gonna an excellent choice. Kill chicken parm. I think I'm with Brennan. you, Jesse. I, I mean, oh man. But like, okay. It's you know it's like it's one o'clock in the morning. You're you're heading home. It's a cold night in New York. You swing by the bodega on your mm -hmm, way home. Mm -hmm. You go up. There's Cornelio. He's like, "What's up, boss?" And you're like, "I'm good, man. How you doing? Let me get a chicken parm on a hero." You get the sandwich. It's heavy. The fucking sauce is like seeping through the paper wrapping. You sit down on a cold stone stoop. You start eating it, and for a brief moment, you haven't slept in days. You're suddenly whole again. <laughs> Because you're going home to your rat apartment. Because <laughs> <laughs> you haven't slept since that fucking muscular mouse died. And you married that chicken parm. You married that chicken parm. Uh, I guess here's my thing to that. And you've been on the record as saying your most sought after feature of any food is heaviness. Um, <laughs> That's true. If I, I don't need to look at food or smell food or taste food. If you give it to me concealed in a bag and I hold it in my hand, as long as I have to somewhat activate muscles in my back and shoulder to keep it up in the air, then we're in for a good meal. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like like if you're like cold night and this is something comforting, I'm like far more comforted by something a little bit of spice in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of tikka masala, a little bit of like like they both have they're both heavier and they're both spicier and my god both... if I have done anything to suggest that I favor <laughs> chicken parm over chicken tikka masala or buffalo chicken then that is on me sure chicken parm was under attack and I had to <laughs> really what it is is I am in a polyamorous marriage with all three oh, do yeah. they know that if they don't, then I've failed as a husband. <laughs> if they don't know how much I care, then that's on me. Okay. I believe in you guys. I see this. <laughs> yeah. This is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> you just make sure you're spending an equal amount of time yeah. with each Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And obviously there's something that we have to navigate. We have to navigate these relationships Seems with hard. each other. Yeah. And and I, you know, they are all different. So you have to love them in different ways because they're not the same person. You know, it's not a one size fits all approach. This is the most passionate you've been about anything we've talked about. <laughs> <laughs> but would you have them all together, like on the same plate? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Wow. wow. Hey, it's a, you hey, know. He's blushing it's married. It's, yeah, it's, it's a while. I am, a woo. Some Valentine's Day? Sure, yeah. I am sweating. <laughs> That's very cool. That's All very right, cool to think about. Back to All right. <laughs> Um, should we, let's do let's do one more because we're running we're running out of time a little bit. We got a couple other things to to do today, but you oh, know sure, what? Sure. Let's let's do one oh, more. We just have just so cap many it off. Of these. Yeah. Or let's do or let's just make do like a real lightning round one. Anyway. Uh, Acne, hiccups, the flu. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, kill the flu. It kills people. The flu does kill people. Yeah, you gotta kill the you flu. gotta. It's so bad, you but guys. But I don't wanna fuck acne. 
Yeah, I feel like you'd get something weird. (laughs) (laughs) Also, those three hiccups they could be kind of like those three don't feel like they belong together because like acne and hiccups are like these are a mild annoyance. If I was in like a lineup in a police station as the flu and fucking acne and hiccups were there, I'd be like, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, there there are chapters of history dedicated to how fucking destructive I was. Yeah, like the fucking Spanish flu. I mean, like truly, like I have brought nations to their knees. You put me in with fucking hiccups <laughs> over here? No. I would definitely fuck hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we're even talking. Is You're gonna honest? marry Okay, acne? I have to marry acne. It's just what I, I have to do if I wanna thing. fuck hiccups, which is the whole which I've just realized was the point of why I woke up today yeah. to declare that. See, I wanna I wanna marry hiccups because I wanna fuck them all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 just a real spasmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, that's the thing is, I feel like hiccups is such a roller coaster of an experience that you couldn't sustain marriage to hiccups. It goes on longer than you think it should. It mm. does. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, and you're laughing, and it's sometimes fun. it comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. They're always surprising you. Yeah, yeah they're surprising that's you. That's the thing about hiccups. And there's shame there, so that's good for me. But <laughs> acne is the same way. It pops up out of nowhere sometimes, you know? It's It's a little more consistent. Yeah. But it does. But hiccups don't scar. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's that's poetry. (laughs) That is poetry. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll we'll leave it off there. The hiccups don't (laughs) scar. Um, uh, We're going to do a little rejected sketch theater. Uh, And this is a sketch that I wrote. Um, uh, So now I'll reach forward and pull this thing. This is a sketch I wrote ages ago. How long ago? Uh, well, Pat's in this. Murph is in this. And is Adam in this? I don't know. Maybe it's just Pat and Murph. Um, uh, cool. So let's do... Um, uh, let's. Uh, I'll go ahead and cast this. Let's do... Um, uh, Jesse, you want to read for, uh, for Pat? Uh-huh. Janie, you want to read for Murph? Mm-hmm. Um, Brennan, would you mind reading the stage and also Spindly Man? <laughs> Ooh, yes. Great. This is a sketch called This Smartwatch Tells You When You're Going to Die. Interior office day. Pat and Murph work at their desks. Trap enters very wet. Whoa, that is a lot of sweat. Yes, much more sweat than usual. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah. I've just been working out more since I got this fitness tracker. Trap lifts his arm to reveal a sleek black Fitbit-like wristband. It tracks and reports my steps, my heart rate, calories consumed, and even the exact date of my death. Trap shows him the tracker and presses a button. A tiny skull icon appears next to the date, 31722. Whoa, that's so cool and terrifying. Yeah, and having immediate access to all this data is so convenient and such an existential nightmare. So you're telling me that... So far today, you've walked two miles, have seven years left to live, and consumed 300 calories? Yep. It seems pretty accurate. You can also measure, you can change the units to measure in kilometers walked or heartbeats remaining. I guess it's a cool gadget, but does it actually help you get into shape? You know, it does. It's silly, but having this on my wrist forces me to think about my fitness, my food choices, and my impending death. Well, you're looking good. Thanks. I've been waking up early to go on runs and staying up late wondering why I even bothered, knowing what I know, you know. I've lost five pounds and my sense of purpose. Wow, in only a week? Yep. I'm healthier than I've ever been, and it's never mattered less. I'm running, weightlifting, (laughs) visiting my extended family, everything. So how does this work? Trap takes out his phone. It links up to my smartphone so I can see all my data, and it occasionally sends me reminders that I am, in fact, mortal and will die on March 17th, 2022, or that I haven't reached my goal step yet. His phone chimes. Oh, here's one now. We see the screen say, don't forget, you're going to die on March 17th, 2022. So close. What was the date before you started working out? You know, that's the funny thing. I've been changing a lot of my habits, but that date never seems to. I guess it knows something I don't. (laughs) He laughs and stares into the distance, a haunted hundred mile stare. You know what the worst part is? Adam and Murph share a look. (laughs) Sometimes it doesn't sync properly, so I have to restart the app. Oh, that's lame. I was going to get one, but maybe I'll wait until the next gen. Oh, where'd you get yours from? Oh, from the spindly guy with an impossibly tall top hat and a long black cloak. He just gave it to me for free while cackling darkly. So yeah, pretty good deal. Nice. Trap's phone chimes. He looks at the message. Whoop. I better get moving if I want to try try to move that date. Or maybe I should do something else since that date seems unchangeable. But shouldn't I at least try? And what would be the more valuable use of my time? Is there something I should be doing with my life? And what's a good low-calorie filling lunch? 
The creepy spindly man trap mentioned appears out of nowhere. Avocado toast! <laughs> he laughs darkly, trap mm, nods. Yeah, yeah. Yay! Uh, that's that. Um, yeah. So I ri- wrote this, like, shortly after getting, like, one of those little fitness trackers. And there is that sense of just, like, it, like... It has that that like psychological thing of like oh yeah like I am watching what I eat I am like moving a little bit more and like with that is always the sense of like when you're talking about like, any health thing it's like and I am going to die and it no like this thing knows a, like you'll turn it on it's like hey just so you know we noticed you burned a thousand calories it's like oh thanks buddy and just the thought of this thing like as a truly like doomed device of like hey not even related to your health. We know you're going to die on March 17th. Okay. Maybe a bus. Maybe hit by a bus. I also, I um, I was with my, my sisters came into town this weekend, and they all have an Apple Watch, and they all are connected to each other, which I didn't know. And so they it'll, it'll like, beep when someone else has done something, and I hate that. <laughs> I don't like want people to... when someone else finishes a run, you're... Yes. Oh. Or, and then at the end of the day, it'll tell you, like, oh, um, you know, Elizabeth didn't work out today, and she didn't fill up her, her <gasps> rings or whatever. Ooh. So everyone knows. Which public shaming for yes. your... Oh, I hate that. I hate that, too. I love that. <laughs> yes, we should be a hive. Let's <laughs> all exist that. in one mind. Can you imagine that on this? Being like, oh, also, now they're down a day, and they're going to die um, a day earlier. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but, Trap, do you still track stuff, or are you off that? Uh, I'm off that because I, um, when I moved, I I lost like the little dongle that connects mm. my thing to the thing, and it was just like it was one step too many to be like ah fuck. Oh, and the other part of it was, um, it got I got it when I was in New York, and it was pretty good there because I you know I was like, walking around a lot, and it, it wasn't the wristband kind; it was kind of just like stick in your pocket. And I was like, oh, this is doing a pretty good job of tracking my steps, and it got so confused when I was driving again. Uh, and I remember like there was one time like oh. I came into the office and it's was like, whoa, buddy, we saw that you went 12 miles in, in, in 20 minutes. And it's like, that was not me running crazy fast. That, that was me driving to work. You and, ran as fast like, as a car. Yeah, they're like, you're good for your calories for the day. It's like, fuck, I'm not. No, what are you talking about? And like at that point, like I couldn't trust it anymore. And it, right, it, it, it and I like, would trust it. I'd say, yes, I did. Thank I did you. It. Oh Thank my God, you so you're right. Exactly what I'm I needed. so fit. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, those things can be double-edged. Like, they can definitely just make you feel bad or, like, you're not doing enough or, like, the ones that track your sleep. It's kind of upsetting, too. You're like, oh, my God, I don't sleep. That's, I don't know what to do with this information, you did, know? I, I've never done the sleep tracking stuff. Uh, I think mainly because I can usually tell whether or not I'm like, oh, I feel like shit today. <laughs> like, oh, but the app says I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, I did it. Like, tell us if you're if you're moving in your sleep and you know that kind of thing. So is that the yeah. one that you put it by your head? There's that, and there's a wristband too. Ah. Yeah, I've tried both. Okay. Do you does it feel Do you feel better like with that knowledge, or does it do you like? I guess that's the other thing too. Is like with with exercise, if it's like, hey, you're not moving enough. It's like, oh, there's a very clear thing I can do to fix this. I can move more. But if it's like, hey, you didn't sleep very well. It's like, I know. I feel bad. I know. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm tired. <laughs> Stop yelling. <laughs> now I'm guilty and I didn't get enough sleep. Exactly. Um, not to be overly superstitious, but um, given that you did set your death date on St. Patrick's Day, uh, was there a part of, is there a part of you that is superstitious about uh, having written your own death into a sketch? Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't even think about it, um, but I guess we'll see. We're we're not that far away. Yeah, I was reading that. That's two like years. pretty soon. Yeah, three, well, th- three years and change. It was right? definitely the intent when I wrote it for oh, it to wait, be yeah, in the future, but not too far in the future. Like it, it was like, oh, that's like enough time, but to the like it feels distant, but definitely like this is like this is coming up fast. Was sort of the the idea because I wrote this maybe three years ago. Uh, so yeah, like other things like. Because if someone told you like right now, it's like, hey, you know for a fact, eight years from now, ten years from now, you're gonna die. It's like there, that that would be like a very strange thing because it's like, well, ten years in a way feels like it's like, oh well, like I have this knowledge, I can do something with it. But still, ten years is only ten years, and like there, there's got to be like a weight of that sitting on you, and just like what the. If hell? I knew for a fact I was gonna die on this day, and it didn't matter what else I did. 
then I would just fucking do shit. But you know? what if it I were like run around and twenty years from now. jump off things? Right. No. <laughs> yeah. If it's magical, if someone's like yeah. you, you actually can't Cannot. die until this. Oh, I'm like, I'm gonna yes. go fight crime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm impervious yeah. to bullets. I, you mean you fucking cannot I'm, kill right. me? I will say in my, I mean, I'm put, I'm putting myself in a box here, but in my imagination of this, I would also still feel the pain of like jumping off something, but I would always heal and get better. So if someone shoots me with a gun, then I'm gonna feel that and that's gonna suck, but I will survive. I suppose it could be a situation where you go try to solve a crime, you get shot, it like deals nerve damage to you and you're just in the hospital for the next 10 years. That or in a coma, be, you know? Yeah, you don't know the circumstance of being alive, so it's tricky, you know? Yeah. I'm gonna play it safe. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear it and keep moving with exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> um, no, that's fucking wild. I guess if I, also, I don't know how many people are actually interested in this, but like, as far as like nitty gritty sketch stuff, there's something here too of just like having written this so long ago and like being able to like look back on it. I feel like if, if I were to change things about this now, like there's like a lot of the, a lot of the rhythms, a lot of the lines are very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm probably trying to change that up a bit. Um, uh, Cause like tr trying to get like, it reads very it, like glib and sort of commercially, which was a little bit intentional, but it, it, it also has like kind of flattens it out a bit. Um, but I think like trying to get more of those moments of like, um, the like the the weakest um, like like the the lamest smallest things about fitness trackers of like oh did you know it can like it get it's so accurate with your steps and also I'm going to die uh, and trying to like find different more different ways to like make yeah. that juxtaposition stand out more is probably what I do to change this. You've written so many sketches over the years. Do you ever have? A time when you're just like, I'm out. I got nothing. You're so prolific. Is it ever just like, oh gosh? Uh, I so when I first like really started writing sketches, like that was my feeling, basically like every every month. Like I say month. Like here it's like it's more on a weekly turnaround. But when I started, it was like writing on a, a mod team at the UCB and. Every month I was like, that's it. I have nothing left. I I've, I've tapped out. No more ideas. I'm done. And after about like two to three years of that, of just going like, oh, that was it, that was my last idea, I don't have anything left. Uh, then uh, then it like kind of like pushed forward into this other thing, it's just like, I'll figure something out. I don't know, like, nice. I've done it, I'll figure it out. Like it, And a lot of that was also like giving myself permission to be like, it may not be the best sketch I've ever written. Uh, uh, it may be something that isn't quite there, uh, but I'll figure out something that at least has a kernel of an observation in there that can maybe be turned into something mm -hmm. else. Um, that's an inspiring insight for Hell people yeah. who right. you know feel like they're out of ideas. I, yeah, I think like a, a lot of it is just that that fear of like especially when I know when I was starting like I wanted to make sure that like every sketch I wrote was like this will be the funniest thing ever written. This is going to be the best thing ever. It's going to be it's going to be new, but a thing that when people see it they go like I totally recognize <laughs> that. And like it's like setting all these. It's like it's like oh yeah that that would be the perfect sketch, but if you put all those barriers on yourself to, like if you that's the level you're trying to hit every single time uh and if you're trying to hit that on the first swing like not like first draft like not even giving your time to work on it it's like you're going to wind up so in your head about it it's going to be that much harder to write something just like write giving yourself permission to write something kind of shitty and then turning it figuring out how to make it good later is much healthier <laughs> that's awesome that's yeah. really cool i agree with that you gotta give your, you gotta get the pressure off. Yeah. Um, uh, because uh, any person, whatever creative thing you're doing, because I think some of us come from like an improv, like Janie and I both did improv, um, and uh, being unprecious with your material is the best thing you can be. Yeah. Uh, and just being like, no, it's like my body of work will be good and the various instances of it will be better or worse and I'm not going to dwell on those successes or failures. I often find that I don't celebrate successes very much, mm -hmm. particularly because I have inured myself to being bothered by failures. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna like throw a fucking ticker tape parade because something worked. Right. Like it's supposed to work. Yeah. And then if it worked, great. And then w because I'm taking it easy on the successes, when the failures come along, I'll be able to be like, hey man, we just don't worry about this kind of thing. Right. We just keep moving. Yeah. That's awesome. That's that really cool. It does make it where like sometimes people ask me, like, hey, like, what's your favorite sketch you've ever written? It's like I can't think of <laughs> I can't name five sketches. I've <laughs> I, I just forget about There's them. Just they, so they just go many. up. Yeah. You just make so many things. Yeah. <laughs> It's also awesome. just like, also, I mean, it kind of feels like everything's kind of your baby too at the time. 
I don't know. That feels mm-hmm. weird to say, but like, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to pick a favorite because I like them all, and they are all different in different ways. Yeah, and they all bring something challenging and something different to the table, whether it's doing them actually or D twenty yeah. or you know. There's an interest. Absolutely, there's an interesting thing I think too with the idea of people that are embarking on a creative pursuit when they haven't before. So a lot of people that are like, I am thinking about changing my life and moving in a creative direction are sometimes considering their first artistic endeavor. And of course, something is going to take on an added level of significance when it is your only, because by definition, the first thing you are doing will be the only thing you have done once you finish it. Mm-hmm. So it takes on this incredibly like mythological significance. Uh, one thing I often say to improv students when I'm teaching like a 101 class, when people freak out about their class show, they're like, when we have our show at the end of this eight weeks, I actually had someone asked me one time, they were like, they were like, um, what do we do if our class show is bad? And I looked at them, and this is on me for not being more empathetic in this moment, but I was trying to answer the question. I sort of went full robot and didn't really understand the question on an emotional level. And I was like, you'll feel awful and go home. Yeah. And then you'll wake up the next day, and then it will be a new day. And you might still feel bad. I don't know how you'll feel, but like you'll keep I guess you'll just keep going, right? I don't know, what will you do? And it's like this weird element where, where what I started to say when I had that bad answer was, look, you're, uh, there's two kinds of people that are in this class. Either this is a fun thing you're doing to get better at public speaking, or it's like a weird, you're taking an improv class basically for therapeutic reasons or whatever else. You're not, in other words, you're not interested in being an improviser, right? In which case, what do you give a shit? This is the last thing you're doing. You're not you're not in it for the long haul. Or you're someone who wants to be an improviser, in which case, what do you give a shit? You're going to do so many more shows. Nobody's career lives or dies by their first class show. So whether you care about this or you don't, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also you learn from that, right? Yeah. Like... It will, every time, I mean, this is this is like preaching to whatever. <laughs> but like, you learn from everything that you do wrong, or if you feel like you've done something wrong, then you can look back and think about like, what did I do during that show that wasn't right? Did I, you know, was I yeah. not agreeing with people? Was I not playing the game or whatnot? Yeah. Yeah, and the but, lesson to be less precious and yeah. just like you know, just get more at bats, and that's one of the main things. I mean, You'll get better. A hundred percent. And I, you know, this sounds. We sound, we're all kind of doing the old coach thing of like, yeah, you just get up, you brush yourself off, <laughs> yeah. you walk it off. But there is some truth. I remember the like, last thing I said to this one student who asked, like, cornered me afterwards, and it's like, no, you don't get it. I'm really scared of having a bad show. Is I just went like, is your, I was like, do you think your fear will get acute enough that it will stop you from performing? And the student was like, oh no, I'm gonna perform. And I was like, then your fear doesn't actually matter. Right. Like if you were telling me I may not do the class show, that's a different conversation. If you're gonna perform, then be as afraid as you want. Right. You're gonna do it, right? Or use that fear. Or use that fear. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't. You're gonna do it, so I'll see you there. Yeah. yeah. You know. Okay. Well, we are almost out of time, so let's try to sneak in some uh, some viewer questions here at the end. Um, uh, and we'll start with this one because it was actually something that you alluded to at the start of the episode. Uh, this is a question from Marty Martinino. Uh, do you ever read the negative <laughs> feedback slash comments on social media? And if so, how do you feel about it? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in like one video and was just like scrolling through the we comments. We all do. I'm in the background of videos and I still look through everything. Um, that's very funny. Yeah, It's also fun. You got to take them all with a grain of um, salt. Uh, I don't actually read read the comments. I used to. When I first started at, at, at College Humor, it was very fun because it was like, I'm new here. I've got a big old platform for like people to read my writing. And um, uh, and, and especially because like the first couple things, uh, the first couple articles I wrote, like really like hit hard, and like people were like this is great, this dude's great, and so I was like, oh, this feels nice. And then it only takes like a couple of articles that people just like don't jive with to be like. Oh, oh no! Like and yeah. like, it, doesn't, it only takes like one negative comment to sort of like rattle around in your brain for the rest of the day, yeah. and and like that happened enough times where I was like, I don't know this person, like I don't know who they are, what their sense of humor is. Like, there are certainly people, like, people I know who are like, I didn't think this was funny. I was like, I don't care what you think, you know? Uh, and it's like, I don't know if this person is one of those people. And, uh, but then like the flip side of that, and almost like what you were talking about, of like, take the good with the bad, is like, if I don't care what this person thinks, I also that also means I can't really care what the positive comments are like. And like, once that sort of clicked in, it was like, well, 
then I'm just not going to bother reading these. This is like kind of a waste of time. At best, it's like kind of ego stroking. And at worst, it's going to sort of like really psychologically stick with me and ruin my day. So I'm just not going to fucking bother with this at all. Um, So that's where I'm at, uh, generally speaking. Uh, Yeah, I think it's interesting. There's a, um, uh, well, I I think that, our minds are fundamentally broken. <laughs> and by ours, I mean people, humans, because you can, like, and this is true of internet comment sections, social gatherings. Like, think about throwing, like, if you have a, a birthday party for yourself and you invite 100 people and w- everyone is saying, like, hey, you're so important to me. You're a close friend. I love you. Here's a gift. I'm showing you that I care about you. And one person says something rude and belligerent. Guess what the story is going to be that you talk about for the next week or couple weeks of, like, you won't believe it happened at my birthday party. Someone said something rude or and like, shitty to me. Or, like, so-and-so didn't even come. Like, they're not even yeah. in the story, but it's about them. <laughs> right. You know? and, and, you're, and what ends up happening is you're actually by focusing on that negative, you're actually punishing all the people who did do the right thing. Like everyone that was conscientious and kind becomes white noise and the weird aberrant or deviant like, oh, this person was negative or this person said something unkind, those stick out in your mind because our brains are broken. But it's evolution. I mean, we would like process threats and danger and negativity and we would we're actually wired to hold on to that and store it versus positive stuff, which is like, that's not going to help me survive. Like, <laughs> I got to like know what to avoid. Yeah. So we're just trying to operate in this world. So I could see not reading the comments. Cause I it's just, just like, take them all with a grain of salt. I laugh at most of them, especially the mean ones. And then I know you're all jealous. So <laughs> back off, you know? Uh, I remember, I remember, um, the first like negative comment I read about myself, um, it was in college. Uh, my, I was in a, um, uh, uh, like a, a comedy magazine uh, in college, and we did this um, uh, we did this big prank uh, prank video thing that was um, uh, it was called Drinking Time, uh, and there was uh, <laughs> I love that. there's there was a um, uh, I was a I was a, col- a campus tour guide, and so I, like I knew the route for for uh, oh I knew the route for the um, that the tour took, and I knew that there was one particular spot on the route where they stopped like right outside frat row, and they really tried to downplay the the role of Greek life on campus, even though it was an extremely large part of uh, of campus life. And it always felt like a weird part to me where it was like almost every tour guide was like, "I'm going to gloss over this as quickly as I po- as I possibly can, and then we're going to move on to the next thing." And um, uh, uh, I knew that there was like a like a line in the script, so to speak. Not really a script, but it was, they're just like, like it's like yeah, just mentioned like there you know there is Greek life, like parties and college stuff does happen, but you know it's just like it's it, it's not a huge part of life, and you could totally choose to ignore it if you don't if you don't want to get involved with that. And we had um, basically like the little comedy group arranged to like when the tour reached that part, a specific tour reached that part, that we would. Um, uh, uh, I would, we had planted a bunch of people all over the space. I would run down the street yelling, it's drinking time, and people would just pop up everywhere. So they're like, oh, wow, it's drinking time. We got like the marching band to come in and like play songs. It's just like marching, everyone would be like, oh, wow, time to drink, it's drinking time. Um, uh, and it got like a little bit of like, got kind of passed around. It was, it was a fairly successful video for like a very early like try, just like making something for the internet. And um, uh, most of the comments were like, oh, cool, this is fun, what a crazy thing, blah, blah, blah. And I remember, um, one of the comments was, uh, and I remember it because it was almost like poetry and how, um, and how like baffling but still like aggressive it was. And it was, uh, I hate this fat fuck. I want to break the brakes off this bitch. <laughs> break the brakes <laughs> off <laughs> this. Oh <laughs> no, <laughs> trap! No. I was like, ah, like, oh, I barely even understand what that what that means. Uh, great. Are you a car? Like, what? There it is. Oh, my. <laughs> gotta break the brakes off that bitch. Gotta break the brakes off this bitch. Yeah. No, no, no. no. That's not appropriate. No, that's me. <laughs> it's not good. Don't do that. Don't so, be that way. Yeah, there are negative comments sometimes. <laughs> Um, we are, I think, out of time. I, um, so, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to get to these other two questions. We had too much time, too much fun fucking marrying and killing things. Yeah. Um, uh, so, that is our show. If you have a question that you would like to ask us, uh, hopefully we'll get to it for one, but you can ask it on the Dropout Discord. That's available only to Dropout subscribers. Uh, so, check that out. And, uh, yeah. Let's go get some chicken. <laughs> We're gonna go fuck some Let's chicken, go fuck guys. It on. Pick <laughs> one. Pick one. No! I can't. Victor, 
Avengers 1. Bye, guys! Bye. Hey, it's Mike Trapp. You know, if you want to talk to the cast and crew here, you can at the exclusive Dropout Discord. It's a great place for behind-the-scenes content. And if you like behind-the-scenes, check this out.